Hello, everybody. So it is good morning wherever you are. I don't know if it's the morning for you, but it is 6 a.m. where I am. So I'm located in Phoenix, Arizona, and it is a nice, probably it's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit where I am today. So it's really warm, and we're excited to have all of you here. With me, I have um, Salvador Liberto, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. He's with New York College. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. Could you introduce yourself? I can. You can call me Sal um, because my name can be a mouthful. Um, but we're happy to uh, have the chance to talk to everyone around the world and uh, share information about Newberry College and. Hopefully you guys will get a, a really good sense of Newbury's about today. We love our college. Uh, I've worked at Newbury College for now uh, 12 years, 13 years, coming on 13 years. And it's just a great place. We get to know our students really well. We really fit within this boutique sense. This is kind of smaller school, personal attention, quick growth for students, great career internship opportunities. And we'll walk through the slides today. I represent the enrollment wing of the college, so it's our responsibility to make sure we have students. And um, we really have some fantastic students, and we know you have some fantastic students, and we can't wait to connect your students with our students. Perfect. Thank you, Sal. So we're going to get started today. Sal's going to introduce a little bit about Newberry College and everything about it. Um, if you have any questions as we're going, just feel free to chat them into the chat box, which is at your bottom left, and we can answer them as we go. So I'm going to have him get started, and then we're going to kind of hand off, and I'm going to talk more about the admissions process. And let me, I'm going to start with our, next, our, our first slide. Okay. Great. That, what you just saw was, uh, was a picture of Boston. Uh, we're, we're located about four miles from this spot here. Boston, of course, the number one college town uh, in the United States, um, something like 250,000 undergraduate study here. Uh, we're located in Brookline, which is right next to Boston. Um, it actually is um, on the Boston town line. We're about six blocks from that town line, and we're located about three miles from downtown Boston. Um, so really great access to the city, but in this really nice residential neighborhood, very safe, um, very pretty neighborhood. Um, Brookline, where we are, was recently named the top suburb in the United States. Um, high property values, um, great educated people, great restaurants, great culture. Em and I had a nice uh, dinner there in Brookline once. And so, uh, hey, Dallin. And, and, um, and so I think she can attest to how pretty and nice it is, too. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's our, here's a shot of our campus, uh, one of our, you know, Tudor style. Brick buildings, lots of the students in the background. Uh, you can kind of see some of our students there. Um, you know, Newbury's uh, really, as we said, a really caring place. Um, we have on-campus housing for your students. Um, they're in a few different residence halls. Um, right now, two of the residence halls actually are, are about a mile and a half from campus, a little closer to the city, so if students wanted that experience, they could have that. Of course, we have some residence halls right on campus. Uh, of course, we have great uh, dining facilities. Um, and, you know, like I said, we really take our students small classes, average class size about 17. Some years it's 15. Um, really good faculty to teacher ratios. So we like to say students don't, don't get lost at Newbury. They're not just a number. They're, they're known, highly personalized env environment. And I, and I think it's the sort of place where students can be successful very quickly. We can head to the next slide, I guess. You know, as we talk about student life, um, we've got lots of clubs on campus. In fact, the young lady in this picture here is Nicole Cabrera. That's uh, that's me. That's my bald head uh, talking to her. And um, and Nicole is from Bolivia, and she's an international student, and she's done really well at Newbury right now. She's the in charge of our interior design club. She's an admissions ambassador, which means she gives tours to students. Uh, she's very active, very involved, and really just a great example of the, the success that international students can have at Newbury. I think she would tell you that she was scared 
um, before she came to the States to study, really know what to expect. But Newbury College provided for her a really good uh, foundation and um, the right kind of environment for her to be successful. Um, you can see just we have some of the sports. We're in NCAA Division III sports. Um, we've got everything from soccer to lacrosse, softball, baseball, basketball. Um, we've got a very active games club, which is kind of neat. We've been competing, um, playing video games against uh, other colleges. Um, we played against Boston University this year. We played against the uh, University of Massachusetts, among others. And that's kind of a, a fun new club that we started this year. Um, got graphic design, of course, multicultural student organization. Newbury is a very diverse campus. Students from lots of different walks of life. Um, coming together from lots of different places. Uh, we have a yoga club, and that's another great success story. That was actually started a couple of years ago by a first-year student, and she grew the club, and that just in that first year, it became the club of the year on campus. Um, and so that was just really nice to see how quickly that student developed and how, how she was able to take the opportunity that she presented and run with it. And then students can start clubs. It's kind of a neat thing that we do. And every year, somebody's just like the yoga club, somebody's starting a club on campus. Um, the student light's very vibrant. Obviously, you know, Boston's right there. There's so many things to do in Boston culturally, so many museums, so much history in Boston. It's so, so important um, in, in terms of the formation of the United States. Um, and so there's a lot to see and do. There's a lot to learn. And of course, Boston's a very diverse city. People from all over the world come here, come to study here. And so, you know, we, we appreciate that aspect of who we are. And that's, that's partly why we want to grow our international population. We just want to be part of that multi, multicultural world and um, increase our diversity. So we can head to the next slide. We mentioned that Brookline is the number one server in the United States. Uh, right now, we have students enrolling from all over the world. Our top three locations right now are Vietnam. China and South America. We'd love to grow in India, um, have more of an Indian presence. We'd love to grow more in Europe. Um, certainly love to places like Indonesia and, and Thailand. We'd love to have more students come from those places. And we welcome students from all over the world. Um, any, any country that wants to send us a student, we're willing and able um, to have them participate in our education. And like I say, we're a warm and welcoming community really the perfect small college environment, we think. Um, and we think we have the best location possible because we're this nice campus that's small, everyone's welcoming, um, we're situated in a beautiful residential neighborhood, um, you know, mansions all around us, um, and at the same time only three miles from downtown Boston, easy access through public transportation, or, or a student could even drive down, um, you know, about three miles from Fenway Park, which is where the Boston Red Sox play. Okay, so yeah, now we're going to do We've a added quick some... highlight. Mm -hmm. Oh, go for it. Oh, great. Yeah, just yeah, just a few of our programs. We, we added cybersecurity this year, um, which we're very excited about. It's such a dynamic field. It's a, it's a, it's a big field globally. Um, we think there's a lot of interest in it. Um, there'll be a lot of job opportunities, both in the U.S. side of it. And so we're really excited about this program. We think this will really take off for us. Uh, one of our most popular majors is interior design. And you saw Nicole earlier. She's an interior design student. And I'd say it's a, the top current choice for international students. And um, really, it's a hands-on program, very career-focused, great project work that happens in it. Our students have been very successful in terms of job placement and internships. And then one of the programs that we're, we're quite well known for is hotel and restaurant management. And we know that this has great appeal internationally. And when students earn this degree, you know, and they start getting involved with hotel chains, well, hotel chains are all over the world. And so this is really a passport for students um, to, to work in lots of different and interesting places. Um, and, you know, it's, it's become a global economy. And I think the hotel world is really one of the best examples of that. You know, you have Hilton Hotel or Hyatt or Sheridan, um, Marriott, all over the world. And once you get involved in some of those groups, and of course they're all here in Boston, um, it's really a fantastic launching pad to a career. 
Perfect. Okay, so, well, thank you so much, Sal. That kind of covers um, Sal's portion of the presentation, just kind of giving us an overview and a feel of the sense of Mary. I know that I was just visiting there, um, I don't know, I guess it was about a month ago, and I loved it. I, yeah, I loved, loved it. it so much. I said, I wish that I had gone there for, for my undergraduate career, just because I love the the small feel. It really feels like, you know, you're with your family. I That's how I could describe it. So. Um, it's a really great school. I think our international students will fit right in. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and so if you have to jump off, you can. If you don't, then you're good. So. I'll um, hang so around in case we have any questions for me. Perfect. Great. Perfect. So just to kind of talk a little bit about, there are actually a lot more programs than the three we had just talked about. And so I just wanted to throw a list up on the slideshow so that you could all see some of the other programs. I know that some of our really popular programs that we've seen at the boutique level for international students are anything business related. So there is a business management um, program. There's an international business management program. And there's also um, the other one that is really popular is because those ones are really popular. But then again, there's so many different options for students. So it's it's really for that. So next I'm going to move on to talking about the application requirements. So just quickly, um, as far as the application requirements go, the most important, I guess the only thing that is required to have a specific score would be the English requirements. So all students who um, apply are required of IELTS score of a 0.5 or higher and a TOEFL score of 71. And that is actually the only requirement um, as far as admission goes, correct, Sal? Uh, as far as English goes, you know. Um, we certainly, in terms of applications, we do like to see, you know, an, academically a certain threshold of performance. Really the test for us is do we think a student can be successful at our college? Um, and so we, we try to be holistic in that review. That's not set on well, okay, you got a C or a D you know, or low low grades here, so you can't come. It's it's more. Do you think do we think the students ready to be successful? And so um, there are lots of different ways to measure that, but certainly it starts with uh -huh. with English competency. Uh -huh. Okay. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Of course, we want all of our students to be um, well rounded and ready for that. Um, but the one measure, like that, is a measurable thing we have is the English requirement, right? And then, as far as the application process goes, so um, I see a question. Um, yes, this is fifty-two thousand for about a year. So, and Sal, he can answer. So, as far as the yeah, application like process smart. goes, we have it's, it's yeah, it's a two-part. And so, the first part of the process, there is an application that's filled out online on Newberry's website. And um, we also have, if it's more convenient, we have a PDF paper application that the student can fill out as well. So, whatever is more, um, easier for the student. Then there is a personal statement or like a, sample, a writing sample that is required. Um, two letters of recommendation. Hello. Um, there's two letters of recommendation. We have the transcripts all from secondary school are required to be submitted and then the proof of English that we talked about. So what will happen is the student will submit all of these documents to Newberry and Newberry will review the documents. They're usually really quick about reviewing the documents and making decisions so that's a really great um, thing. It's a smaller school, really great customer service. And once the student has an admissions decision, so let's say that they've been admitted to the university, they will receive, you know, a letter from the university um, asking for the following things, which is, as you can see over here, the enrollment process. There is a $100 I-20 processing fee, um, which is non-refundable. This is just required to process that I-20. As you know it, you know, there's lots of different costs associated with that. Then there's also a declaration and certification of finance, which is just that the student has the appropriate amount of funds to study at Newberry. This um, was also submitted with an original letter of support from the sponsor's bank or some kind of letter showing that the student has the appropriate funds. Um, and then there is a copy of the passport, which is 
obviously necessary for all international students. And then the, once the student has gotten their I-20 and they've applied for their visa and they've received their visa, there is a, um, an international student deposit. This is pretty common for all of our universities, so that deposit is due after the visa has been issued. Um, and I can see that there's some questions that I think this maybe solves. Yeah, I'm, I'm answering them. So let's, I'm plug, I'm okay, perfect. Through. And the next, perfect. So the next slide, um, I can see kind of answers one of the questions about scholarships as well. Um, here are, and I see you, you have a good point about the scholarship, so I'll talk about that in a second. So there are actually lots of different scholarships for students to, uh, that they automatically are considered for when they apply. And these scholarships are based off of merit, so um, based on the student's academic success in the past and other things like that. And the scholarship is applicable for one year and um, the amounts are yearly. And so you can see here there's a wide range of scholarships. A student will find out if they've received a scholarship upon admission, and so that can affect the amount that the student can re needs to show for financial support. So let's say they got a $5,000 scholarship, for example. That would mean they would need to show about $47,000 um, 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 dollars in for the bank statement. So hopefully that kind of answered the question. Okay, so that is kind of covering the basic admissions process for Newberry College. I know that's where most of the questions always usually come is what are the different requirements. So let me see what kinds of questions we have. Um, I think, let's see, so um, as far as the amount of scholarship, I'll said it can be up to about 70% of the tuition. I mean, that would be for extremely um, highly qualified students, but it can also be, um, there's also lots of other amounts, so I'll put that slide back up again. And as far as the fragmentations, the fragmentation of costs, let's see. So the tuition. Yeah, I'm going to put that know, in. The tuition gonna... didn't make it on this slide. Okay, perfect. You yeah, it's about, that in it's, because... about 30, yeah, it's about 33,650. I'll, I'll throw that in the, the answers right now. Okay, perfect. Yeah, sorry, that didn't get into the slideshow, but yeah, it's a, he, he'll type that in right now. Um, and then, let's see, Vikash, uh, you have a few students who'd love to join for bachelor's and master's, but are in doubt. Okay. Yeah, so as Sal said, they just, probably will be, you'll be adding master's in a few years. Yep. Like Let me just add, say something about this. Well, yeah, we're, we're working on adding the masters. Um, we won't have them for this year. We probably won't have anything next year, so it's probably going to be two years, um, but we'll see. Um, but in terms of the scholarships, most students will receive some form of scholarship. Um, somewhere, most students will probably be in that 5 to 11 range, but really good students, you move up. And then we'll probably increase our scholarships for next fall. Um, so this fall, they'll be at a certain level, but it'll be a, even a little bit higher, and, and we'll release those once we have them. Um, uh, the question is, are, are scholarships guaranteed for all individual students? Um, if the student receives a scholarship and they perform well, they would have the scholarship for all four years, um, but I can't promise that every student receives a scholarship. Most students do receive some form of scholarship. I'll type that in. Perfect. Are there any other questions about this? That's a great question. Um, Sal, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, no need for SAT for scholarship, although we do require scholarship SAT for our top scholarships. So our top two scholarships for next year, um, for this year, just the presidential requires the SAT. Okay, perfect. And while um, 
you all are typing your questions. So I see that I only um, I'm seeing about three of you. I know that there's more in the waiting room that haven't clicked to chat in. Um, if those of you that are in our in our waiting room or in our um, participant pool, if you are not currently assigned representative of the boutique universities consortium, because I know that a few of you are actually just investigating whether you would like to be working with us. If you are interested, please um, send me an email. I'll put in my email right here. You all probably do. You all already have it since you heard from me on our but Oh, sorry, I have her. This is my email. So if you are not one of our um, signed agents, please send me an email and I will direct you to our agent application form, which is on our website, and we can go from there. So once you fill out an application, we would love to start working with you and recruiting your students for Newberry. So, um, Sal, do you like to talk about calculating the scholarship? If, if, I mean, there isn't really any information on that or... Oh sure. Um, we use the, we use a tip. Typically, we'll use a GPA range. Um, so we we take the student's transcript and we translate it. Um, you know, or, or or I should say, we recalibrate it to the American scale. Um, so we would say that someone at a presidential scholarship would be um, about a three point five or better with with good SATs, SATs above 500 in each section. Distinguished scholarship would typically be maybe a 3.3 or so um, GPA. Dean's somewhere around a 3.0 and then the Nighthawk Awards would be offered to anyone below that. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll also type in a note here. Perfect. Yeah, so for those of you, just to kind of give you a little bit, if you're unaware of how it works in the U.S., so typically like the 2.0 is like passing. It's like basically like the minimum passing is a 2.0, and as you go up from there, it's the higher. So in India, for example, I know that like it's categorized through um, a high pass, a secondary high pass, and then a pass. So you can kind of use that to kind of gauge where that that GPA is. Um, you can also do a GPA calculation online, which I'm sure you've all done before. So, perfect. Are there any other questions? I'll just wait and for everyone to chat in. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much to all of our participants in our webinar today. Thank you so much, Sal, for taking the time um, out of your busy oh, schedule you. to talk with everybody. Um, and if there's any, any other questions, you can feel free to contact me, and we would love to get started recruiting your students for as soon as possible. So I know that I know that Newberry would be a great option for them. I can personally attest to it, and we're really excited to um, recruiting be recruiting for this college. So thank you so much. Cash for sending me an email at Word. We'd be, love to work with you and to start recruiting your students. We're really excited. So thank you so much, everybody. Like I said, if you have any questions, please send me an email. We'd be happy to, to, to work with you more. So thank you, everybody. Have great. a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, thank you. See you later. Bye.
Thank you, everyone.